All right. Hey, this is Phil, you guys. He's putting the beautiful sound together tonight. You know, the Pagoda is uh, kind of a tricky scenario to uh, get a sound system going on right. And uh, Phil has become the master of the Pagoda. So Sonic Pagoda Master. All right. No, I'm good. I'm good. Because uh, Keeley's going to use it. So. Um, <coughs> you know, I just want to take a quick second. And I'm not going to talk too much, but I just want to tell you a little bit about this instrument. Uh, this is the earth harp. And uh, I, uh, the first time I set it up when I invented it, and the reason it's titled earth harp is I mounted a series of chambers on one side of a canyon. And I ran the strings clear across to the other side, tying into the other side of the canyon and uh, turning that canyon into a giant harp, the world's first earth harp. And um, so it literally used that landscape or that piece of earth to create the instrument. Now, since then, I've uh, 
had the honor of, uh, wow, listen to those sirens. It's wild. Uh, since then, I've had the honor uh, of taking it to many places throughout the world. Um, I've strung it across beautiful golden fields. I've strung it up to mountain peaks before. One mountain peak I strung it to actually had caves up in the very top of the mountain. And you could sit in the caves while someone was playing the instrument uh, 700 feet away, and the cave walls would actually vibrate. That was pretty cool. Um, I've strung it uh, in many concert halls. Uh, I've strung it to uh, basically mounting on the stage and stringing it out to the um, balcony of, say, I don't know, the Grand Theater of Shanghai or Kennedy Center in DC. We've had it at the Coliseum. And the Coliseum was the background and the strings are shooting out, much like the pagoda is today. Uh, this is a very unique, beautiful uh, installation for us. Now, I've also been stringing it to the top of skyscrapers. And uh, recently we were in Singapore and we strung it to a skyscraper there and Guinness was there and the World Record Association and uh, we got it. They gave us the world record. So it was 300 meters. Yeah, thanks. So this is a world record earth art. Um, I mean, you know, we kind of set the record, but it didn't really exist before. But <laughs> anyway, it was a good time. Now every, every, uh, every installation is uh, a bit of a challenge, but also um, it's a bit of a sport. In fact, installing the earth harp, I always refer to as earth harping, because it's like, you know, hanging off the side of buildings, running strings. I grew up on sailboats, so I just kind of have a unique understanding of how things rig up, and um, that's where it comes from. Now, tonight, the earth harp is resting here on the uh, structure here for the pagoda. It's actually tied right into the pagoda itself, and the strings are going up and attaching into the hillside, the architecture of the hillside, and turning this whole hill and the pagoda basically into a musical instrument. It becomes the structure and the resonating chamber um, and the bridge for the instrument. So tonight we're actually all sitting in a musical instrument. And um, that's always good. And we've got a pool, which I don't really know how that ties in, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's a sound bath, that's right. I love it. Yeah, actually, on, on Thursday, people said they could actually feel the uh, vibration inside the water, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, so that's a plus. Um, now, when I started creating and inventing these giant string instruments, I had to figure out a way to play them. So what I discovered is that if I put a little bit of violin rosin on my hands and run my hands along the strings, pinching the string, I produce what's called a compression wave. It's the same principle as running your finger around the edge of a wine glass. It's purely acoustic, you guys. Um, they're just microphones in the chamber, and it's going into the sound system, but no computers involved. Uh, the way the instrument is tuned is with these tuning blocks. The further out the block is, the lower the pitch. So this would be the highest note here, because it's close in. And as I go down the scale, you'll notice the blocks get further and further away. Out over your seats, down to this low G, which is way up there. Now, if I wanted the octave below that G, I would need a string twice as long. And the octave below that, twice as long again. It doubles every time. So um, I think that's pretty much Earth Harp 101, but I just wanted to cue you guys in on what's going on with this thing. and. Uh, yeah, it's really fun to play. So we're going to play some more. All right. This is uh, the theme from um, Common Man, the Aaron Copeland piece. All right.
Thanks, you guys. You know, um, there is a the coolest version of uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer playing that piece of music for the Olympics in the 70s. I highly recommend checking it out. It's on YouTube. ELP. Back in the 70s. All right, we're going to do a, a quick piece in G minor. And then, um, yeah, and then Keely is going to join us. All right. All right. <laughs>
Yeah, I love that uh, G minor. It's such a beautiful, uh, sort of mysterious, Halloween-esque type of vibe. Um, the lovely Keely is going to come up right now, and uh, yeah, we're going to. Uh, oh, and I think this you're going to use this mic. So here's Keely. Turning Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese, I really think so. That's my set, thank you. <laughs> All right, we're gonna sing some good stuff for you today. So I'm really excited about this song because it was just the 24th year anniversary of it. And uh, I, there's a lot of political things going on right now, as there always is, but you can really escape this week. And so I want to dedicate this one to the ladies. This one's for the ladies. Please. 
All right, that's a lovely Keely, you guys. All right. All right, well, we're going to do a, uh, a few more pieces here. Uh, this next piece is uh, entitled Requiem for a Dream, but we need to get Ada, our violinist, up. She is an awesome violinist that uh, Sean and I have actually worked a lot with, and um, her name is Ada, and she is fantastic. So, Ada, thanks for coming. All right. Do you, uh, yeah, let's get you a, we're going to get her dialed in here. Requiem for a dream. <laughs>
Thanks, you guys. That was beautiful. What amazing fire performance, huh? Gorgeous. Woo! All right. We're going to. Here's one you might recognize.
good. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Pachelbel's canon, that's right. Anyway, uh, you know, actually, Baroque and Renaissance music works really well on the earth harp, so that's why we like to do that one. And it's really fun to play with Ada because she's able to do all that fancy voicing. Anyway, nice job, Ada. Um, <coughs> okay, we're going to rock out this one final one. This is uh, um, going to pick up the energy, hopefully, a little bit and uh, rock you guys out a bit. Okay.
All right. Hey, thanks, you guys. I know Nick is going to come up and introduce everybody and uh, finish out the night, but I just thought I'd, I'd just send you off with one last little line uh, from this instrument, and uh, here it is. This is actually, this piece of music was written after a man was on a ship in a typhoon storm, and he said, if I make it through this storm, I'm going to write an epic piece of music. And this is what he wrote. Thanks, you guys. I forgot I didn't have an A-string. Anyway, uh, much love to all of you. Thanks to Nick. Uh, he's got some very sweet announcements. And thanks for being such amazing listeners. I mean, I was, we were really connecting with you guys. So it felt good tonight. Thank you so much.